Ladies and gentlemen, the President-elect of the United States, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. and Dr. Jill Biden. Welcome the Honorable Amy Klobuchar. Vice President Pence, President-elect, Madam Vice President-elect, members of Congress and the judicial branch, former presidents and first ladies, vice presidents, leaders from abroad, and a whole bunch of Bidens. America, welcome to the 59th presidential inauguration, where in just a few moments, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will take their solemn oaths. This ceremony is the culmination of 244 years of a democracy. It is the moment when leaders brought to this stage by the will of the people promise to be faithful to our Constitution, to cherish it and defend it. It is the moment when they become, as we all should be, guardians of our country. Have we become too jaded, too accustomed to the ritual of the passing of the torch of democracy to truly appreciate what a blessing and a privilege it is to witness this moment? I think not. Two weeks ago, when an angry, violent mob staged an insurrection and desecrated this temple of our democracy, it awakened us to our responsibilities as Americans. This is the day when our democracy picks itself up, brushes off the dust, and does what America always does, goes forward as a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This conveyance of a sacred trust between our leaders and our people takes place in front of this shining Capitol Dome for a reason. When Abraham Lincoln gave his first inaugural address in front of this Capitol, the dome was only partially constructed, braced by ropes of steel. He promised he would finish it. He was criticized for spending funds on it during the Civil War. To those critics, he replied, if the people see the Capitol going on, it is a sign we intend the Union shall go on. And it did and it will. Generations of Americans gave their lives to preserve our republic in this place. Great legislation to protect civil rights and economic security and lead the world was debated and crafted under this dome. Now it falls on all of us, not just the two leaders we are inaugurating today, to take up the torch of our democracy, not as a weapon of political arson, but as an instrument for good. 
We pledge today never to take our democracy for granted as we celebrate its remarkable strength. We celebrate its resilience, its grit. We celebrate the ordinary people doing extraordinary things for our nation, the doctors and nurses on the front line of this pandemic, the officers in the Capitol, a new generation never giving up hope for justice. We celebrate a new president, Joe Biden, who vows to restore the soul of America and cross the river of our divides to a higher plane. And we celebrate our first African American, first Asian American, and first woman vice president, Kamala Harris, who stands on the shoulders of so many on this platform who have forged the way to this day. When she takes the oath of office, little girls and boys across the world will know that anything and everything is possible. And in the end, that is America, our democracy, a country of so much good. And today, on these capital steps and before this glorious field of flags, we rededicate ourselves to its cause. Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce to you the senator who has worked with me and so many others to make this ceremony possible, my friend and the chair of the inaugural committee, Missouri Senator Roy Blunt. I should have known when Senator Klobuchar got involved, at least there'd be a touch of snow up here this morning. <laughs> of all the things we'd considered, I don't think snow was on my agenda until I walked out the door a moment ago. But thank you, Senator Klobuchar, and thanks to the other members of the Joint Congressional Committee on the inauguration as we officially began the 59th inaugural ceremony. I also want to thank the Joint Committee staff and our partners, particularly our security partners, for the, they, the way they've dealt with unprecedented circumstances. When I chaired the inauguration four years ago, I shared President Reagan's 1981 description of this event as commonplace and miraculous. Commonplace because we've done it every four years since 1789. Miraculous because we've done it every four years since 1789. Americans have celebrated this moment during war, during depression, and now during pandemic. Once again, all three branches of our government come together as the Constitution envisions. Once again, we renew our commitment to our determined democracy, forging a more perfect union. That theme for this inauguration, our determined democracy, forging a more perfect union, was announced by the Joint Committee before the election with the belief that the United States can only fulfill its promise and set an example for others if we are always working to be better than we have been. The Constitution established that determined democracy with its first three words, declaring the people as the source of the government. The Articles of Confederation hadn't done that. The Magna Carta hadn't done that. Only the Constitution says the government exists because the people are the source of the reason it exists. They immediately followed those first three words with the words to form a more perfect union. The founders did not say to form a perfect union. They did not claim that in our new country nothing would need to be improved. Fortunately, they understood that always working to be better would be the hallmark of a great democracy. The freedoms we have today, the nation we have today, is not here just because it happened, uh, and they aren't complete. A great democracy working through the successes and failures of our history, striving to be better than it had been. And we are more than we have been, and we are less than we hope to be. 
The assault on our capital at this very place just two weeks ago reminds us that a government designed to balance and check itself is both fragile and resilient. During the last year, the pandemic challenged our free and open society and called for extraordinary determination and sacrifice and still challenges us today. Meeting that challenge head on have been and are healthcare workers, scientists, first responders, essential frontline workers, and so many others we depend on in so many ways. Today we come to this moment, people all over the world as we're here are watching and will watch what we do here. Our government comes together, the Congress and the courts join the transition of executive responsibility. One political party more pleased today and on every inaugural day than the other. But this is not a moment of division, it's a moment of unification. A new administration begins and brings with it a new beginning. And with that, our great national debate goes forward and a determined democracy will continue to be essential in pursuit of a more perfect union and a better future for all Americans. What a privilege for me to join you today. Thank you. Please call to the podium a longtime friend of the president-elect and his family, Father Leo O'Donovan, to lead us in an invocation. Please stand if you are able and remain standing for the national anthem and the pledge to our flag. Gracious and merciful God, at this sacred time we come before you in need, indeed on our knees. But we come still more with hope and with our eyes raised anew to the vision of a more perfect union in our land, a union of all our citizens to promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. We are a people of many races, creeds, and colors, national backgrounds, cultures, and styles, now far more numerous and on land much vaster than when Archbishop John Carroll wrote his prayer for the inauguration of George Washington 232 years ago. Archbishop Carroll prayed that you, O creator of all, would assist with your Holy Spirit of counsel and fortitude, the President of these United States, that his administration may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to your people. Today we confess our past failures to live according to our vision of equality, inclusion, and freedom for all. Yet we resolutely commit still more now to renewing the vision, to caring for one another in word and deed, especially the least fortunate among us, and so becoming a light for the world. There is a power in each and every one of us that lives by turning to every other one of us, a thrust of the spirit to cherish and care and stand by others and above all those most in need. It is called love, and its path is to give ever more of itself. Today, it is called American patriotism, born not of power and privilege, but of care for the common good, with malice toward none and with charity for all. For our new president, we beg of you the wisdom Solomon sought when he knelt before you and prayed for an understanding heart 
so that I can govern your people and know the difference between right and wrong. We trust in the counsel of the letter of James. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Pope Francis has reminded us how important it is to dream together. By ourselves, he wrote, we risk seeing mirages, things that are not there. Dreams, on the other hand, are built together. Be with us, holy mystery of love, as we dream together. Help us under our new president to reconcile the people of our land, restore our dream, and invest it with peace and justice and the joy that is the overflow of love. To the glory of your name forever, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of our national colors by the Armed Forces Color Guard, the singing of our national anthem, and for the Pledge of Allegiance. and gentlemen, here for the singing of our national anthem, accompanied by the President's own United States Marine Band, please welcome Lady Gaga.
Please welcome from the city of South Fulton, Georgia, Fire and Rescue Department, President of the International Association of Firefighters, Local 3920, Fire Captain Andrea M. Hall, for the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What you are all about to be part of America is a historic moment of first. To administer the oath to our first African American, our first Asian American, and our first woman vice president, Kamala Harris, it is my great privilege to welcome to the inaugural stage the first Latina to ever serve on the Supreme Court of the United States of America, Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the oath of office, followed by musical honors. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. <coughs> without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Please welcome Jennifer Lopez to perform This Land is Your Land and America the Beautiful, accompanied by members of the President's own United States Marine Band. This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Islands From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream waters 
this land was made for you and me. As I went walking down that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. I saw below me that golden valley. This land was made for you and me. Well, that was great. The sun is shining, and Mr. President-elect, this is the first inauguration in the history of America where J-Lo was the warm-up act for Chief Justice Roberts. Uh, with that, it is now my distinct honor to introduce the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, John Roberts, to administer the presidential oath to the next President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the oath of office, followed by musical honors. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of President of the United States. Office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. You.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.